Breaking tonight, the search for a young boy's killer. Charges against the man arrested dropped. Now police are back to square one. The murderer is still loose at this point. Shea Calhoun cleared by a rock-hard alibi, video showing him in Pearland around the time of the murder. He was with me all that night and all that afternoon, so there was no way that this was possible for him to do this. As the community grieves, gathering in Josue's memory, police now starting from scratch in their search for a killer. And it has now been 72 hours since 11-year-old Josue was stabbed to death on his way home from school. Now on this day, some major developments in the case that has rocked our community. Here are the three big headlines in the story. The person who killed Josue is still out there somewhere walking free. Police say Shea Calhoun is not the killer. Murder charges against him have been dropped. And we've learned new details about his alibi just in the past few hours. Video showing Calhoun at a Pearline convenience store around the time of the murder proving the ID made by a witness at the scene was mistaken identity. That video in just a moment, but first we want to take you live over a gathering now in North Houston. Sky 2 over James and Fulton Streets, where there is a large number of people who have come together in Josue's memory. Hi, Ryan Korsgaard joining us live from there tonight. Ryan, I know that people started showing up there about an hour ago. Bill, dozens of people have been here throughout the night. You can see there is a crowd over here. People have gathered. They've also gathered on the other side of the street. Well, let me take you high up there. Sky 2, live over this intersection at James and Fulton Streets. We are just north of downtown. We're right at the very spot where 11-year-old Josue Flores lost his life on Tuesday afternoon. Now let me bring you down here to the ground. People have been here carrying signs for the last hour or so. They are demanding justice for Josue. Now, police blocked off the street in all all this has been calm. Dozens of people were here earlier. Let me show you a picture of Josue Flores. And this is what this gathering is all about. Here's what mourners told us a short time ago. We are their backbone. We are who makes them feel safe. They cannot go to the store and feel safe, right? They can't even go outside and feel safe. This is a, a little angel over here. And this really, really upset what happened. Back live now, you can see this memorial. It is growing. There are candles there. There are balloons. There are stuffed animals. So much. More and more people coming. They're even taking donations. Uh, the new information we have learned this afternoon, we know that there is a march that will be again right here at the crime scene on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. It will go to the Salvation Army again that Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. But for right now, uh, dozens of people just gathering here, uh, demanding justice, they say, for host way. We're live today. Ryan Korsgaard, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Ryan. New at 6 o'clock, Channel 2 investigation how a case like this could happen. A man arrested based on a witness account. The charges later dropped. Channel 2's Robert Arnold has been digging into this issue for years. He's live downtown with what he uncovered. Police say Shea Calhoun always maintained he did not kill this little boy. When detectives got their hands on this surveillance video from a Pearland convenience store, it confirmed Calhoun was nowhere near Josue Flores when he was killed. Police originally started looking at Calhoun because he had had a run in with Metro Police the day before. During that confrontation, Calhoun dropped his wallet, which meant police had his driver's license and more specifically, his picture. This confrontation with Metro Police officers happened not far from where Josue Flores was murdered. As detectives were searching for Flores's killer, they were told about this incident. He was wearing clothing matching the description of our suspect from the murder. Houston Police Lieutenant Robert Blaine says his detectives were also told Shea Calhoun dropped his wallet while running away. They then took the picture from his driver's license and put it in a lineup with several other pictures. Showing it to a witness who wound up identifying him as the uh, suspect fr from the uh, murder case. That led to murder charges. When surveillance video showed Calhoun was in Pearland at the time Flores was killed, police dismissed the charges. And eyewitnesses implicating the wrong person is far from uncommon. Everybody get on the ground! In 2011, Channel 2 Investigates did a test. We put several people in a room and staged a mock attack. Our group was then asked to identify the bad guys. I think they were white. It looked like green tops and bottoms. It look like black pants or dark color pants. No one got it right. Investigators say this is why when someone like Calhoun is arrested based on an eyewitness, there is still more work to be done before the case is closed. We want to catch the suspect, but it has to be the right suspect. 
And with the charges being dropped against Calhoun, that means the killer is still out there. Police are asking for the public's help in solving this murder. Reporting live from downtown, Robert Arnold, KPRC, Channel 2 News. This case has caused so much pain from the Flores family losing a loved one to Che Calhoun's family speaking out tonight just hours after murder charges against him were dropped. Jonathan Martinez joins us live to continue our team coverage with more on how all the families involved are coping with their pain tonight. Jonathan? Yeah, Bill, tonight there's a whole range of emotions for two different families. One family is relieved their relative has been cleared of the crime as murder charges have been dropped. Another is still waiting and praying that police will catch a killer. You have a warrant out for your arrest for murder. Hours after making his court appearance, charges against Che Calhoun and the murder of 11-year-old Josue Flores were dropped. Investigators say Calhoun, who was arrested and accused in the stabbing death, was not responsible and had an alibi that checked out. This looks like a Barney Fife investigation. Had they done one iota of real investigative work, they would have sought and learned just from the family alone that he could, ha he could not have committed that murder. His family says Calhoun was in Pearland at the time of the crime and store surveillance video there proves he didn't commit the murder. He was with me all that night and all that afternoon so there was no way that this was possible for him to do this and I just wanted to be cleared up that he, he's not the person that did this to this young man. But as Calhoun's family is relieved by the latest developments, another family is grief stricken all over. He was all about love and compassion and just being there for people and I know that's the message that he would want to come out. A special memorial was held at Marshall Middle School in Josue's honor where he attended as the search for his killer begins again. Because I know HPD is working hard. I know they are working hard full time, overtime. I know they're putting their hearts into it. And Calhoun's family also expressed their condolences to little Josue's family, and they too are hoping that killer is caught and caught soon. We are reporting live tonight from Manville. I'm Jonathan Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Jonathan, thank you. We want to give you a look now at the description of the man wanted in the murder of 11-year-old Josue Flores. Police say the killer is also an African-American man, about the same age, 25 to 30 years old, and the same weight, 180 to 200 pounds. He has short hair, and at the time of the murder, he was wearing a black shirt, a green jacket over his shoulders and black pants. If you know anything about this killer, please contact police. Now to a developing story that we followed throughout our midday and noon newscast today. A man leading police on a slow speed chase right here in North on the North Freeway, which led to a lengthy standoff on I-45. He surrendered about an hour later. Now at four o'clock, we told you that deputies identified the man as Scott Inman. Channel 2 Investigates told you about his criminal past, including being a sex offender. Well, now new at six o'clock, investigator Joel Eisenbaum tells us about the ominous message that Inman posted on his Facebook page just one day before this chase. Joel? Yeah, Dominique, you put all these pieces together. It's a portrait of a man who is really blowing apart at the seams. He has trouble at home. He has trouble making ends meet, and he has definite trouble with Johnny Law. If you weren't one of the thousands stuck in it, did you hear what happened on I-45 just south of Conroe Friday morning? A bizarre police chase that shut down one of the nation's busiest highways. Uh, did not exceed around 40 miles an hour. Unfortunately, the defendant was placing a weapon or showing a weapon, placing it to his head. Uninjured and arrested, 38-year-old Scott Inman, a career criminal whose girlfriend says she just filed a protective order against him. Um, he has struggled with crystal meth. Inman appeared to be unraveling. Just yesterday, he posted publicly on his Facebook page, quote, you know, I just realized no one in this whole world likes me. It's my fault for sure, but I have no idea how to fix it. Inman, who's a father, had intermittently stayed at his brother's home in spring. This is where deputies Friday intended to arrest him for alleged sexual assault of a teenage girl. It's trouble he's accustomed to after having done 10 years in prison for indecency with a child. Only initially they didn't find him here. The actual guy drove by in his truck and I said, hey, that's, that's the guy right there. And that led to this, an hour long pursuit that not only ensnared commuters, but also a wanted man. When he's sober, I mean, he's a great guy, big heart, will do anything for you. But as soon as he gets on those drugs, it becomes a devil. Scott Inman has already spent a large portion of his life in prison. His latest charges include sexual assault, felony evading, and felon in possession of a gun. 
We're live in Tomball tonight. I'm Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Joel. It's been just over a month since one of the most devastating floods in Houston history. And in less than two hours, singers are going to take the stage to help those impacted by that flood. Here's a live look from inside Lakewood Church, where the Houston Recovers concert will begin at 8 o'clock. Country singer Clay Walker will perform, as well as Brian McKnight, Regina Bell, Houston native Yolanda Adams, and La Mafia's Oscar De La Rosa. The concert is free, and any donations will go towards the Greater Houston Storm Relief Fund. Frank joins us now with... What fun! Tell you what, that's not just a sunset, that's an invitation to the weekend, and it is upon us. It's going to be beautiful. We had a wonderful start. If you've been out, you know that. So get ready for a nice Friday. We'll talk about a few shower chances straight ahead. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez with a medical breakthrough for people who suffer migraines. How a new procedure can trick your...